All right. So as promised, here's uh, part two. Here's a solid 10 point outline for your 30 days pros and cons costs and key highlights of staying in Thailand. Dong Tan Patea Beach. Anyway. It's a different beach from where we're staying. So overall cost of living. The pros. Thailand is, an affor is affordable, making it a great destination for budget travelers. But the cons can be, well, cheaper, costs can still add up in the tourist-heavy areas. For example, you can live on as little as $800 to $1,200 USD for a comfortable 30 days, depending on your lifestyle. And, of course, your spending habits. Well, there's that building I was talking about before. Oh, look. Look what. Look at the. Want to do that? It's a. Uh, what do they call those? Gondola. It's going from that building down, I guess. I was wondering what was going on at that building. I was wondering if it. Because from our beach, it, you can see it above everything else. And. Uh, I was thinking maybe there was a revolving restaurant up there or something, but anyway. From here, it doesn't look that tall, but... Just so you know, that condo that you see in the background uh, right away here, we never paid no more than 600 Canadian for the whole month for this place. But uh, budget options like hotels and guest houses are widely available. Luxury options can quickly become as uh, expensive in especially popular areas like this, which is Phuket or Bangkok. In case you're wondering, these fine folks are just putting their feet in these uh, in this aquarium. I can't remember if those are just uh, minnows or what the heck they are, but apparently they just feed off of the uh, dead skin cells on your feet. Uh, I didn't try it though. This is what you call a uh, sweet and sour sea bass. I don't know if you can see the fish from all the sweet and sour. Oh, there's his tail. Whoops, here you go. And that'll be his beak. That'll be the rice stick. No, just regular rice. Just regular rice. Go back to the topic at hand. A basic room with air conditioning can be as low as $10 to $20 per night. Well, high-end resorts can range from $100 to $300 per night, and I'm sure well beyond that. Um, moving on to food. Street food versus restaurants. The pros of uh, that would be street food is incredibly cheap, tasty, and offer authentic experiences. My pro tip there would be just be careful. Some tourists may worry about food safety. Western style restaurants are pricier, for sure, for sure. Okay, so an example would be street food meals can be as low as $1 to $3, while dining in a mid-range restaurant might cost around $10 to $20 per meal. And of course, even more depending on where you go. Transportation, taxis, grab, and public transport. The pros... Public transport is very affordable and easy to navigate. The cons, taxis, and ride-hailing services like Grab can be more expensive, and you may have to negotiate fares. Um, side note, we used Grab quite a bit and didn't have any issues and didn't find it expensive at all. 
example, a local bus ride could cost under a dollar, while grab ride can cost anywhere between five and depend five and twenty, depending on the distance. And of course, more if you're going further. Now, having said that, uh, I mentioned a bus ride could cost under a dollar. There was actually a transit, and I can't remember, I just remember it being a red bus, and it was 100% free. Don't know if that's still the case, but we did experience that in Bangkok, all right? Just so you know. It wasn't a pleasant bus because there was no air conditioning, but it was still free. Also, keep in mind as a Tourists in Thailand, you can rent a motorbike and a car, something you can't do in Vietnam. You can rent a motorbike in Vietnam, but you can't rent a car without a driver in Vietnam. Anyway, uh, moving on to tourist attractions, uh, must-see gems. Thailand offers both famous attractions like the Grand Palace and lesser-known gems. Popular attractions can be crowded and pricey. For example, the Grand Palace has an entrance fee of around $15, while lesser known temples or national parks may cost as little as $2 or $5. Now, I've never been to the Grand Palace, so I can't verify if that's true or not. I got this information from Google, okay? Now, and I used it simply because it's a, these are words I can pronounce. There are so many other places that uh, I avoid because I'm not a very good reader. But my point is this. We visited many, many temples and never paid anything. Uh, there are some, oh, sorry, that's not entirely true. The White Temple and that uh, Black House that's in this video somewhere, they did have a fee. One of the things that you'll notice, if you're with a Thai citizen, and you are a foreigner, you may pay, for example, I think the um, White Temple in Chiang Rai was 100 Thai baht for me and 50 Thai baht for my Thai wife. You know what? It's no big deal. People moan about that. I don't care because regardless, you go anywhere in North America and you're going to pay for it. And a lot of these places you can go to in Thailand are free. So when you do have to pay it's usually not a lot of money when you translate it into your own currency just so you know all right the best time to visit uh, the high season is november to february it offers perfect weather uh perfect weather if you like hot which i do and i usually go to thailand between November and April. In fact, this year, 2025, I'll be there January through April. Traveling in the peak seasons means higher prices and more crowds, of course. But still, to me, it doesn't matter because even at the peak season, you're getting premium weather. And even when they talk about higher prices, <laughs> you know, travel anywhere in North America on peak season and it's very costly. Traveling in shoulder seasons, meaning March through June or September and through October, can save money on flights, accommodation, but expect hotter and wetter weather. Yeah, the rainy season starts, I believe, in April. Uh, visa considerations. Many nationalities get a 30-day visa exemption on arrival, making travel easier. Just check with your local government to find out what you, as whatever citizen you are, uh, like me, for an example, being Canadian, I get 30 days on my passport, and I can get a visitor's visa for six months. But there's conditions attached to that as well. Okay, and you got to get that before you leave the country. This is what's called the Black House. Artist built it and passed away and then he donated it to the Thai government. This was one of those attractions, the Black House, that did cost money to it visit, but it was well worth it, trust me. Maybe. 
there's so much on this property that I didn't even show. That's why it makes it worth it because I could have been filming here for two hours or more. Oh, wow. Looks like your home. <laughs> Cool door. Look at the size of that sucker. Okay, something else you definitely need to be aware of. In the event that you stay longer than your 30-day passport allows you to, you will incur extra costs which need to be taken care of before you actually leave the airport to fly out of the country. But if you're planning on staying longer than 30 days, uh, and a visa extension, which costs around $60 Canadian, uh, I believe that works out to 1500 Thai baht, you can get that at immigration office. Uh, I believe that's, according to today's translation, would be about $45 US. Sure you don't. I did that by mistake twice because I counted 30 days from the day I arrived in Thailand till the day I left. That's how I set up my flight. The first two times I only went for 30 days. My mistake was only counting the days that I was in Thailand and not accounting for the days that I actually took to get there. For example, this January 19th I'm leaving but won't arrive in Thailand till the 21st. But I actually have to count the 19th, sadly enough. Yeah. Thai culture is rich and learning a few customs can enhance your experience. Failing to follow customs like removing your shoes or dressing modestly at temples can lead to misunderstanding. Proper etiquette is also considered when you use the Thai greeting referred to as the Wai. It consists of a slight bow with the palms pressed together in a prayer-like fashion. Number nine, safety and health considerations. Thailand is generally safe for travelers and health services are good. Petty crime, like pickpocketing, can be an issue in tourist areas. Just as a side note, uh, never had an issue with uh, safety considerations whatsoever. I never felt so safe in my entire life than traveling Thailand and Vietnam. Travel insurance is a must and basic health care can be affordable, but emergencies could lead to high cost without insurance. Now, I've gone there a few times without uh, health insurance, but I believe since the pandemic, and especially at my age, they do require, I believe it's mandatory now. Don't take my word for it, but I'm pretty sure, because I don't think I bought it last time. Uh, but the times before that, I have had it. I'm getting one of these with the orange jam. Apparently it's a lawyer. Number 10, internet and connectivity. Wi-Fi is widely available throughout the entire country and mobile data is cheap. In remote areas, internet speeds may be slower and unreliable, which only stands to reason, but wherever there's a lot of people, trust me, I've never had an issue with their connectivity. Data plans can be found at 7-Eleven or even at the airport. Just be certain your cell phone is unlocked. <laughs> this, is this the university Nancy went to? No. No, no. Here is uh, Nepal Luang University. Yeah, I remember seeing this on the internet as soon as I saw that. Very lovely grounds. So, Staying connected in Thailand is super easy and very affordable. They have plans that match any budget. If I'm not mistaken, this was Nancy's first visit to the sea. Uh, this was our two bedroom condo we got in Phuket so she could come down and have a one week holiday with us. It was uh, very reasonably priced. I honestly don't remember the price, but trust me, when we're talking about the money I spend, it is gotta be reasonable or else I'm not taking it. But we didn't have the ocean view on this one. I think we were on the 16th floor here, 
but we didn't have the ocean view we had the uh, uh, overlooking Phuket that tall building right back there that I'm pointing at that's where Nuch and I stayed this was my first trip back to Thailand after the travel restrictions started to ease up because of you know what but anyway um, we stayed in Phuket because they considered it a sandbox. I had to stay there for a week till I tested uh, negative and uh, two different times when I first got there. And a week later, Nutch and I were able to travel to Bangkok, which we did. We spent a week there doing paperwork to get her to Canada. And when we returned back to Phuket, this place that we're in now, I'm showing is uh, where we stayed and this is when Nan came down for a week but we were at that other place over there the first week but both were very good uh, the pool at the other place and uh, all you can eat buffet breakfast was phenomenal I was hoping that Nooch was going to be able to come back to Canada with me but it turned out the paperwork didn't get processed until I was already back in Canada for a month it was okay though because she came I was home at the beginning of March she came in April here's the thing if you're on the fence about coming to Thailand remember it's one of the most budget friendly places where every dollar or Thai bot stretches further you can explore stunning temples vibrant markets and picturesque picturesque beaches all while staying well within a modest budget the food is not only delicious but super affordable from street food to sit-down restaurants plus the culture and hospitality of the Thai people make the experience so welcoming that 30 days will feel like a dream come true if you are thinking of an adventure that offers incredible value without sacrificing quality Thailand is calling your name restaurant right there the baking company over there what's that I know we passed a place that was having lobster for lunch this will be the view from our 16th floor condo Airbnb room in uh, downtown Bangkok and as I get ready to put a fork in this video uh, like and subscribe would be absolutely awesome. Thanks for watching.